Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This is episode 270. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio today is none other than my sexy co host, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Not too much, Calder. How's it going? Fan freaking tastic. And I'm ready to record. I'm back from Gen Con. I'm excited to talk about everything. But first, we like to get into what made us happy this week. Simeon, you got something? You know, this week I finally got to run my Borg. I've been collecting, I've been assimilating, and I finally managed to put them all together. Um, I'm missing the two heavy hitters. I don't have Locutus or Borg Queen, so it was just a bunch of drones and Hugh. There's a lot of there's a lot of puns being made about my Borg team, and I did not appreciate it. <laughs> just want people out there in Heroclix land to know that Hugh is not a joke. Hugh is coming for you. Is that a threat or is that a promise? I mean, it's neither. He's kind of terrible, but <laughs> that four range, my goodness. And he's coming. I did manage to take down a Starfleet team, and we didn't plan on, like, facing off. So it was kind of neat. That was That's fun. awesome, though. That's really cool that that happened. I like that. All right. Right on. So I was at Gen Con this weekend. It was a pretty fun trip. I'm going to talk about it for too much and too long. But you guys are the ones who downloaded this episode of the podcast, not me. So that's not my fault. First, uh, I'm going to save a little bit of Clicks Talk for last. I want to say two things as far as food goes. Number one. The best shake at Steak and Shake is their Reese's Chocolate Peanut Butter. It tastes like a liquefied Reese's Cup mixed with ice cream. It's delicious. It's amazing. Don't at me. Number two, there was a place called Burger Study. They had a burger called the Stranger Things Burger. It was worth all $15 of it because it was in between two waffles. The top one had peanut butter. The bottom one had jelly. It was two burger patties, and it was delicious. And that's all for food. But, like, if you can imagine the Stranger Things burger, how freaking good that tasted, it was real freaking good, guys. Like, I can't can't tell you how amazing it was. Number three, really number two on this list, uh, cosplay. I debuted Kite Man, a.k.a. Uh, what many people thought was Moomin Rider from some Japanese cartoon show, One or Three Punch Man, whatever his name is. I don't know why he has <laughs> punches. I don't know how great of a superpower that is. Like, I could go to my garage right now and I could get a couple of metal punches. Like, sure, Anyone like a cool like, guy. Hey, is that Class C rank one? Yeah. Called her Ness? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that was hilarious. I, I, like, I, I got stopped so many times, and the people I were with just lost it because they knew, knew who I was. But only here with this players really knew. Uh, I didn't have a kite. I got enough flack from that from several people. Um, but besides that, costume is awesome. It was on point. I'm an amazing cosplayer. Just saying. I also did Captain America again. I love that Captain America costume. It's just so much fun. And Game Cap is really easy, really recognizable, and people always get a kick out of it. Next, we're actually going to go ahead and talk about all my clicks events for later in the day. The regional was at 4. The 2v2 sealed was at like 2 p.m. All these events were just so late in the day, so I decided, what am I going to do in the morning? Well, Black Panther Illuminati, awesome set. I got kind of sick of playing Battle Royales with it, I'm not going to lie. So, I decided, for no reason, totally on a whim, that I was going to collect all four of the rare pins, then trade in those four rare pins for the ultra-rare pin that Gen Con has. Pin Bazaar does this at quite a few conventions. They did it at Origins. Um, I don't know what possessed me to do it here, but I was just like, I'm going to do it. So I did it. Um, it was awesome. It was actually really fun. I went around and tried to get all the free pins. The only bad part was the free pins were, like, ones I wanted. I was going to use them as trade fodder, but it just didn't go that way, which really sucked. Like, Weiss Swords is this, like, Japanese card game, but I actually just really enjoyed playing it when I did, so I wanted to keep it, even though it was the easiest pin to get. 
I was like, so how do I get it? And she was like, um, guess how much it costs? And I was like, I don't know, 10 bucks? It's free. Here you go. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, it was, it was like, stupid easy. All the other ones were like, play our demo. Demo's going to take an hour. And I was like, all right, let's do it. So, and then I just ended up buying a bunch to tease this trade fodder. I tracked down all the people in the vests. I got all the four Gen Con pins, which is like a cube. And then one was like a meeple family. One was just like a straight up sword, which is like the coolest one. And then one was like a dagger in the state shape of Indiana, of Indiana which is actually really cool. Um, and then I went ahead and wanted to just go get this superhero girl pin from this Greater Than Games. And that's where I ran into Trapdown! People just blew out their microphones right now. Simi, do you know anything about Homestar Runner at all? Oh, yeah. Okay. Burninator. Burninator, that's right. They were doing a demo of it when I walked by, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. I, I remember this. I, for, I forgot they were making it into a real game. That was awesome. But then I, I looked again, and someone had a strong bad puppet doing the strong bad voice, and it was kind of a, there's no way this is real. Is this actually happening right now? And sure enough, it was the brothers Chap, and they were doing the demo for Trogdor, and he was dressed as a peasant with his head on fire, and he was doing the Shrog, Shrog Brad voice. That was so bad. Trogdor was a man. But anyways, he was a dragon man. And so he was like doing the Trogdor voice, like, oh yeah, Burninate that peasant. Yeah, Burninate him really good. Shut up, Homestar. You know, like, I was like, no way. Is this real? So I went. I hurried up, I bought the game, I bought the pin, came back right in time for them to do another demo, and I was able to play the demo with them. It, it was magical. It was seriously, like, this real experience. Like, I've, I've been a fan of these guys for, like, ten, like not ten years, but, like, a, a really long time, something like, like seven or eight years. And to see them, like, do the voice and be in front of me was just so surreal like meeting there's something more realistic about meeting this celebrity than it was like when i got my picture taken with like charlie cox or whatever because that's like so fast but this was like you played a game with them you did it afterwards you know i was able to shake their hands i was able to have them sign my copy of the game i even i got a picture with them like it was it was so crazy surreal like you i could have got hit by a bus as soon as i walked out the convention center and i could have died happy like just how once in a lifetime like i didn't know they were going to be there it was insane um, so enough of that stuff that people who don't know, they just don't know. They think it's boring. Yeah, that was, that was internet before the internet as it is yeah, today. Like, like, that was like uh, before aggregator sites, you had to like seek out entertainment online, and it was hard sometimes. And it was so difficult. The worst part is like I didn't know him from that. I actually um, I knew him from like Poker Night at the Inventory, and I didn't know who Strong Bad was. So I just researched it. Then I found out he had a game, and I bought that game. I replayed that game like three times because I freaking loved that Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people. It's, it was awesome, all right? And then, then I just ended up just like watching a ton of the cartoons on their website, and they also have a YouTube channel, which is really cool. So, And I remember the time where there was a drought of nothingness. And I, like, it was so weird getting into like the fandom at that time because it was like, oh, they haven't updated the website in like so long. It was crazy. But then now they're, now they're starting to make more content, which is really cool, kind of coming along with this game. And I can't wait to play the game with my family, who has no idea what I'm doing or talking about or why I think it's so magical that this happened. So that's cool. Uh, but Hero Clicks, what were the events I went to? I played in Popper. I'm not going to go over all my teams except for the regional one. The Popper event was really cool. I was always enthusiastic about Popper. I've never played Popper in a post-Medusa environment. And if you play Popper in that environment, you know she kind of sucks. But I keep hearing that, oh, she's terrible, she's whatever. But then I, I played against her. My team was not even, like, totally meant to counter her. Um, but it was it was just, a, I, I would think, a solid team. And she's beatable. Like, I don't, I see why people are complaining. She's very strong. Anything that is strong in normal 300 modern that is also just strong in popper is going to be clearly strong. But she's totally beatable. Like, there's just... There's a way where you can build to not totally counter her and also just build a good team and she's just beatable. Like, there's totally ways to do it. I, I understand the outcry of why they don't like her, why they think she's busted, should be banned, or should be nerfed, and just pop her specifically. But I, I think with the new commons and uncommons we're going to get in X-Men, plus the stuff we already have, she's totally beatable. And I, I think people should not worry about it anymore. Uh, 2v2 was great. Uh, I don't want to have much to say besides that, besides we didn't do very well. I lost every game but the last two, and my 
Oh, I'm a partner in the games. I won't name his name. <coughs> I just coughed. Didn't, I wasn't going to say his name. Isaac, anyways, uh, of Phoenix Nest. <coughs> uh, won no games that day, just, say, <coughs> just saying. Um, not, not casting no shade, though. Not casting any shade. I would never. Uh, and then the regional, I played a Kite Man team, Kite Man Hell Yeah, so it's just as Kite Man. I did way better than I thought. So even though the regional only had 12 people, and you can interrupt me at any time, Simeon, if you want to talk about any of this stuff. I was just going to ask, 2v2, is that like a team sealed where, like, you're just missing the third member? Is that yeah, what it is? That's 100% what it was. Uh, it was basically, yeah, we we did everything for my uh, win account, and then, yeah, that's how we did 2v2. It took us a really long time to get going, even though The Rock has held sealed events like this before. I don't know what happened with the computer or what was going on, um, but it just took a really long time to get everybody seated. A lot of people there that were of the more casual essence didn't understand what 2v2 Team Sealed meant. They didn't understand what Team Sealed meant in general. They've never been to Nationals, Worlds, whatever, Rocktober, etc. So they didn't know how it was held. A lot of guys thought it was them and their partner, their teammate, would be playing on the same map against two other people, Battle Royale style, but instead of one man for himself, it was two, two, versus, two versus two, right? And that's obviously me and you. We know that's not how it goes, but they didn't know. So all I could think was, and even though some people were like, well, that's dumb. How could they not possibly know this? And all I could think is, well, not everybody's super competitive. So really what you need to be thinking is not how could they not know this or is how could we explain it better for everyone to understand what's happening and not just the people that are constantly playing whatever, right? So that's probably yeah, it's also, my, that it's was a, my main takeaway. It, it's just a format that, straight up cannot happen at most venues you know if you get a venue where you've only got like eight players you can't do a team sealed because it'd just be you know like four people versus four people kind of thing or you know like if you did this 2v2 i haven't done the 2v2 format i have done team sealed but if you did 2v2 you could probably swing it at smaller venues which i imagine would be like cool if it caught on because i do like the format as it's like as a whole you get way more options to build around, but no, it doesn't surprise me that not a lot of people knew what like a team sealed was because unless you're at a venue where there's, you know, 30, 40 people, it's almost not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think team sealed can work 2v2, especially for smaller venues. It actually might be able to work if you do a big tournament, try to draw in people from everywhere. There's potential for that, and I liked it. And it was probably the, the biggest um, amount of people in the tournament. Now, the regional was cool because it was only 12 people, right? And regional is normally around 25 people per kit or whatever. But there's only 12. But the, the players there were not of the normal, no offense, South Dakota, Omaha kind of stuff. Where it's like a bunch of kids show up and then, you know... There's a bunch of actually really, really, really good players, but not like super oh, high tier, whatever. For... Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> for not as... calling me a kid, I'm yeah. I'm one of the high tiers, is what Calder was saying. Uh, totally, hundred percent. Simeon Bruce, high tier player, ladies and gents. Um, which is actually it's not false at all, because you do really well. I mean, we're talking about Nebraska State champion of 2018, right? Like 2018, on, ladies and gents. So, but so this was there was like Emily, who's I love her so much. She's so great. There was Jay Solomon, Lucas Van Holland, uh, Isaac actually wasn't in it. You know, Daniel Powell, a lot of people from Clickstaff, Adam Friedman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are a bunch of good players, is what I'm trying to say. Jamie Jordan, shots fired. And I played Kite Man. This is a team I've never practiced. This is a team I barely knew how to run. It was Kite Man, uh, the Joker from the Fast Forces. It was the controlled Batmobile, two big Tonys, Haha ha Sienda, Maxi Zeus, and then the Joker map bonus. I already said Haas, Yanda, what am I doing? But so yeah, that was it. And then two ID cards, Magneto and Wolverine. I just wanted to play Kite Man. Like, that's it. I was like, Kite Man can cart around Maxi Zeus. He can pow, make a little, you know, harpy. He can shoot. Rudy Tooty, Cowboy Shooty. I love that kind of stuff. And then I've got the Batmobile going around. Like, because people just don't know what the controlled Batmobile does because no one plays it. You know, no one really totally knows what that Fast Forces Joker does because no one plays him. And that's what I kind of like about these teams is like, you don't mind at 150, you know he has five clicks, you know one of them's going to be a stop click, you know he pops into whatever. Like, you know that's, you know, you know that's the dial, you know that's the thing. 
they don't know what the heck the control Batmobile does. I didn't know what it did because I didn't practice with it and never did. So, <laughs> But I still, the important takeaway is that I beat a Unimind. And I also didn't totally flat out lose to anyone except a Vulture team. Because I honestly, I, there's no reliable way to take out um, a Vulture. in Vulture in, just... If you have a big Tony on your team, Vultures automatically got that extra charge. Yeah. And it's rough. Yeah. So um, I'm very happy. Uh, Emily took my Vulture virginity, if you will. I, she's beat me before with Vulture, but, like, he was on her team, but he died instantaneously. She beat me with Collins and stuff. This time she actually Vultured me. Like, Simeon, no offense, buddy, didn't get the Vulture <laughs> off. You know, he's just not that caliber. He's a high caliber, not that caliber. And so I was really impressed with that. But I ended up beating, um, who did I for, play for? Sorry, it was Zach. forgot his last name. He's in Clickstaff. Um, I, I saw an opportunity with Unimind. I took it. It went really well. Um, I was honestly really, really impressed. I was able to beat a Unimind team um, with with this, this hodgepodge Gotham City. Uh, next was against Adam Friedman. I don't like Kobik. I'll continue to not like Kobik. I had about a million free shots with the Ha 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 Sienda on those Flora Colossals and a bunch of free shots with the Harpies, and I never, ever hit an 8 or whatever I needed to do to just get rid of those Floras, just to get them out of the way. And I was like, I feel like I was just wasting time. So that game, I lost. I did take home like 70 points, though. Next game was against Jamie Jordan. I And this is luck. Like, once you sit down against a Lobo and a Daredevil, you know, the motorcycle bros, it's just luck. It's will you or will you not roll a seven? Will you or will you not roll a six in the attack roll? That's 100% all it was, and I'll totally say that. But I also played it so I'd give myself the best chances. Um, I'm not going to lie. I rolled a crit hit on a, on a ram, which is just gnarly. Like, when, when you ram and crit hit people so they all take four, yeah, it's pretty dope, you know? Yeah, that sounds so, sweet. And then, of course, Daredevil takes two of those tokens off, and then it's just a matter of rolling one more six. I called Magneto in like two turns later because I had a push to ram. I took like five damage with the, with the Batmobile. <laughs> Might not have been the smartest thing to do because he's just like, I want to ram. That changing direction is awesome. Oh my gosh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes me want to buy another Batmobile since I got rid of mine. Like, it's awesome. It's so dope. So anyway. So I played, I played like a similar team and I did also go up against a Daredevil Lobo and Daredevil is surprisingly easy to take down when you have, like, big Tonys that, like, it doesn't matter if you hit, as long as you get the, one of those sixes. And that's, like, all you need to do for Daredevil. And then eventually when you get three sixes, like, you can take him out easily. Lobo, on the other hand, rolling that seven, I just could not do. So, I'm not going to lie. It took two attacks to roll a seven. And I, it felt a little dirty. It felt a little dirty. I ain't going to lie at all. And that's it. I'm going to cut Gen Con off there. Everybody's like, wow, we, we've already spent like 20 whatever minutes on Gen Con. Let's get over it. But I just want to say everybody had a really good time. I enjoyed meeting some more clicks people there. Like I've exchanged more words like to people who like I went to David's wedding at like Rocktober or whatever, but I didn't really know him that well. And like now over this course of the weekend, I think he's like a really cool dude. Um, like a few of the people I met, how I just I didn't really exchange or talk to a lot. Uh, and I, I had a lot of time to talk to him in a more personal environment because there honestly weren't a lot of people that showed up for Hero Clicks, which is a bit of a bummer, but I still enjoy Gen Con overall. So let's get into the news section, starting off with some X-Men. So... X-Men, huh? How about those X-Men, the animated series previews, huh, Simeon? Pretty, pretty awesome. All right, cool. So, we know the chase theme. It's going to be Hellfire Club. Boo the or inner yay. circle. The inner circle. Ooh. Ugh. So, um, I want in so bad. Just let so me bad. in. Harry Leland. He's a thick boy, but he's always ready to grapple. So let's look at those big hands. Look at those big meaty hands. Look at those big over socks and those buckle shoes. What a, <laughs> what a guy. So yeah, the weirdest part about like the cartoon was I don't even like I'm not a historian, but they're all dressed like I don't know, like 1800s style. They're all like pompadour, like fancy looking people, and it just didn't make any sense. It was a very strange cartoon. 
But Emma Frost still gets you know dressed like a stripper, so it's like whatever. I don't know. She doesn't. She doesn't have to go with the dress code. I don't know. Uh, so Harry, Harry Leland, he's uh, he's hard to move. Hero? Question mark. Opposing characters in four squares modify their attack value and damage negative two if they moved this. If they have moved this turn, so if they like charge up to them or whatever, negative two. Oof. Opposing characters can't be placed from elsewhere on the map within four squares of Harry Leland, so you can't be colossal retaliated on. He's pretty dope. It's uh, he's a lot better than what's his bucket, Citizen Steel, because he's within four instead of within three. So Harry will actually uh, help and engulf your team from Colossal Retaliation, which is kind of neat. He has a second trait, which is the Inner Circle, Inner Circle Club, excuse me. He's the Black Bishop, outwit, but only to choose black powers or special powers. When Harry Leland KOs a higher point character, after resolutions, remove all action tokens from him and heal in two clicks. He's only 50 points, so most of them should be higher. He has six range, sorry, he's four range, double bolts. No special combat symbols. His top dial, his first two flicks really, look a little something like this. Sidestep, in cap, toughness, and he has empower his entire dial. His last three clicks, he has stealth, and then willpower, and then of course that empower the entire dial. Uh, he only has a nine attack and a six speed the entire time. His defense is strong at an 18, then 19, then two 18s, and then a 19. And then he has one damage his entire dial. So like, He's not going to be hurting people that much. So I don't, I don't think he's ever going to be KOing at a higher point figure. Yeah. Like, you know, ever? So he's no. really, he can like tank a bunch, but like, and he's just not, not as great as you'd want him to be. I understand because if you try to do anything but shoot him, it's going to be really difficult to take him out. But like, he's just not, he's just not good. You could, yeah, you could definitely like equip him, push him to the 19, kind of tie people up and uh, give him the, the minus two stats. Is that worth 50 points for a Hellfire Club like keyword only? Ugh. I don't, I don't know. It's almost to be like... honest. I have, I have no interest in this guy. Same. Like, not one of my favorite characters from the series, and. Uh, I just don't see enough interesting stuff. Well then, let's uh, let's take it away to something slightly more interesting. Probably. Slightly more interesting. You are talking about the Cyclops Sentinel. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Cyclops Sentinel has the Sentinel, X-Men, and Robot keyword. So he can be played on an X-Men theme team. Because, you know, X-Men always teamed up with the the Sentinels. Oh, yeah, all the time. A lot. He has a trait. He has two traits. First one is Prime Directive. At the beginning of your turn, Cyclops Sentinel may move one square. If an opposing character with the X-Men or Brotherhood of Mutants keyword is on the map, they may move one additional square. So this is like a at-the-beginning-of-the-turn sidestep kind of thing. So if you're running X-Men, which I think you're running X-Men over Brotherhood because you get to basically move two squares with this guy at the beginning of your turn so you can bring back the sidestep leadership Calder. How cool is that? Woo! This guy Pretty can awesome. move two squares and then roll leadership because it's all at the beginning of the turn. Uh, his second trait, decapitation is irrelevant. Once per game, when Cyclops Sentinel takes damage from an opponent's attack, after resolutions, generate a Sentinel Head Bystander, and Cyclops Sentinel can't make range attacks for the rest of the game. So he's got eight range, one target. It's going to hurt a little bit because all of his dials start with running shot, but if he's taking damage, he's probably going to end up on charge or sidestep. The little bystander that he spits out is... The Sentinel Head, it's not autonomous, sadly. Uh, it's got zero speed, 12 attack Pensai, 18 with a special defense that says, if Cyclops Sentinel is on the map, this character can't be KO'd except by a critical hit. Sentinel Head can't be chosen for Mastermind. This is cool because that means you can't like poison it, you can't end cap it, you can't knock it off of, like, elevation or anything like that. It just straight up cannot be KO'd except from a critical hit. So it's sticking around um, 
they're going to have to KO the Colossal or do something to get rid of it. Basically only, just try and avoid it. The only one bad thing about the Sentinel Head, which I think is dope, you know, 12 phasing or 12 pen blasts for four is amazing. So you can outwit the, uh, the, uh, the defense power, which kind of sucks. You know what? What? I didn't ask you about that call. Okay, okay sorry. Sorry. I, just, just let me, let me dream. <laughs> so yeah, he is, he is a little bit easier to kill than I, uh, would have you believe. Who runs outwit? Come on. Or pulse uh, wave. Two powers. That or never pulse show wave, up. yeah. Um, eight range, sidestep. So it can move two squares and, I mean, you could carry it around. That's kind of like a cool visual is, uh, the Cyclops Sentinel could just carry his head around with him. <laughs> I really hope the head on like the sculpt actually detaches. That would be and awesome. You can, you can like just like move it around. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna have to get two and mod one. Um, back to the actual Colossal though. He's got four point dials. He can be played at 450, 300, 150, or 50 points. Each one starts with running shot, nine speed. He's got eight range. He's in dom. Um, he's got a special attack power. Pensai, when Cyclops Sentinel uses it and hits, after resolutions, choose one to affect a hit character and all opposing characters adjacent to it. You can deal them one penetrating damage or give them each an action token or knock them each back six squares. Hmm. So it's kind of like a weird energy explosion. I mean, like, you're only damaging the one character that you hit, but then you could choose to do the one penetrating to all adjacents. That'd be kind of fun. Um, the knockback six squares would be really fun. Giving them action tokens. Um, it's all fun. I like this guy. His stats, he starts with a 12 attack on his first two dials. He goes from a 19 defense impervious on his first two dials down to 18 defense invuln on his 150 point click. And then his 50 point click, he's just got an 18 with energy shield. Not really super staying power at 150. Um, I think this guy is mostly like a thematic thing that you throw in. I don't know. 18, a 20 from range isn't bad, right? Calder. Ah, uh, no. It's never bad at all. I absolutely love it. I think his 50-point dial is really good. The only bad thing is that, like, if he doesn't die in one shot, then he gets the head. But, like, only having four clicks is kind of rough. You know, it's the only bad thing about that 50-point dial. Um, yeah, and it has to be damage taken from an opponent's attack. So yeah. it's, you can't just, like, push yourself and be like, oh, no, my head fell off. I got this head now. <laughs> <laughs> like, sadly. Speaking of, like, pushing yourself, why... Is there any ranged powers when, as soon as he takes damage, he just loses the ability to do range? Like, what, what's with these sidestep range combat expert clicks? I don't, I don't think I fully understand. Yeah, that. towards like the end of his dial. Do they think he's just gonna keep like pushing himself that many times? The colossal. Stamina? I mean, like, you, that's the only way that it makes sense. Um, I think they just wanted him to have sidestep and range combat experts. The only thing they could think of to throw on with it. But yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, if he's been hit, he's not shooting, so that's the only damage power he has besides leadership. And for some reason, he only has leadership on his 150 and 50 point line. If you play him at 300 or 450, no leadership. Strange. Probably because they think he's going to be the only person. Well, that's not true, because he's 450. You put someone else on the team at 50. All right. Anyways... That's Cyclops. He's kind of <laughs> neat. So, yeah. Next up is Eugene Torbit Witterspan, a.k.a. the Nerd Juggernaut. He's got a trait. He's 200 points. He has no special combat symbols except for giant size. Um, so, yeah, no willpower. Sucks for him. Uh, the girls are going to go nuts. Eugene Torbit Witterspan doesn't count against theme teams. So, you know, just slap him on whatever. Because why not? Uh, he has a special attack power that he has for most of his dial, except for three clicks where he has super strength with, you know, a nine and eight attack, which is just great. And neither of those are, of course, top clicks, because you always grab heavy objects after you've taken some damage and you're randomly in the fray. 
Of course. Oh, yeah. With sidestep. But thank goodness, because his normal uh, attack power is just super strength, comma, quake. When Eugene Torbett would just uses quake and hits, until your next turn, hit characters can't be given actions except move actions. That's really cool. So you're saying that if I quake someone, all they can do is move? That's dope. What kind of attack value am I working with? Well, if you pay him at 200 entire points, he has an amazing attack value of a uh, 11, which can, you know, go up to a, a 14. It could, you try really, 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 really hard, and that's it. You can quake everyone, their entire team, which is going to be a little difficult to do. But let's say it's playing a little bit cheaper. That's right, 25 points. You do get that really cool charge, and you get that cool power, but it's only three clicks deep. And he's got to get there before he can do everything. And he's a little bit of a target because he's big. I like what he does. I think what he does is really cool. I think in practice, it's going to be really hard to pull it off. But it's a cool idea for sure. I think uh, scientist theme team is going to be super big with this guy. I think that's going to define the meta going forward. You just stack like... Let's see, six of these guys, that's 150 points. Yep. Right? Yeah, no, that's how 25 works. And then I'm sure there's at least one good scientist somewhere else. No, there's no such thing as a good <laughs> scientist. All right, well, cool. That, those are the first ones. Those are all from our good old buddy friends that clicked off that WizKids gave to them. It's really cool. So that's where those previews came from. You want to you wanna hit us that next one? Ooh, the next one is from the Fast Forces. So fast. Yeah, they showed us Gambit. Real name, Remy Laveau. He's got X-Men and Spy keyword. He's number 005 in the Fast Forces. He's got improved movement through hindering. One trait, hunted and on the run. Friendly characters that are adjacent and ha or have the X-Men keyword can use probability control when attacked by characters with giant size or colossal. So this trait's going to help it against this set but also like in the meta you see quite a few colossals i mean no the numbers come and go what? occasionally but i think there's a few out there that are good um so if he's on an x-men theme team or i mean on the off chance they give us a gambit id card in the future you could potentially like call him in um and give everyone with the X-Men keyword prob against Colossal Retaliators. So that'd be fun. Uh, you don't get prob when attacking them, though. That makes me sad. He's got one special speed power. The name is Gambit. Remember it. Force Blast. Running Shot. Stealth. I like this. I like uh, the combo. Um, he moves on. Let's see. He comes in at 70 points or 50. At 70 points, you get six clicks long dial, six clicks of dial. At 50 points, uh, it's two clicks less, and your attack drops one. I like the stealth with combat reflexes that he has. He's got two lightning bolts. He's indom. Uh, I like solitaire okay. That's his running shot flare text. That he gets for one click. They just wanted to that put he, that in there. He gets for one click, and it's out of order, because yep. the way it's supposed to read is, I like Solitaire okay, that is, unless I got someone to play with, which is his Force Blast power that he has before that power. Oh, man. He gets uh, Pensai and Precision Strike throughout his dial, not a drop of energy explosion. I don't know. I don't know what they were doing. His little cards explode. I mean, I guess I'm willing to let it slide, but oh man, this gambit's just like really laser focused on one target. I guess. I mean, he's got two bolts at least. That's like him throwing two cards at a time. You know, he throws like you know, like three or four, whatever. Anyway, it's interesting. It was interesting not getting a gambit with uh, with energy explosion, and I think maybe, just maybe, not everyone will hate it. Yeah, but and so I like the fun. sculpt. I like the classic oh, cool. outfit, the trench coat, and the, the weird bodysuit. Heck yeah, man. I wish we all had the weird bodysuit. I'm just happy that Gambit is uh, channeling his inner simian and playing more solitaire, okay? 
I do like my solitaire. <laughs> All right. Next up is a character a lot of people didn't really care to see, but I did because I'm not the biggest X-Men guy, but I do like Captain America, and that means I like his surrounding characters, which means, you guessed it, we're talking about Red Onslaught, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Red Onslaught's a beefy boy. He uh, He's a lot of clicks. No, he's really not for his point value, to be completely honest with you, but he does some really cool stuff, and I can't wait to talk about it. He comes in at 600 points. 300 points or 150 points pretty gnarly he has hydra skeleton crew ruler scientist and the soldier keyword he has the hydra team ability he has nine bolts three targets i said that weird he has nine <laughs> range nine, three targets. nine bolts nine bolts who is this guy zeus he's zeus anyway uh. he has flight he's in dom He's got the big old fist, the tombstone, if you will. Uh, and he has sentinels, free. If an opponent's force has more characters than yours, and you know, they probably will if you're wasting, I mean, spending a lot of points on this guy. Uh, you generate a sentinel bystander just like this. So if you're 600 points, and they're also not playing another 600 point character, you will make three sentinel bystanders. You'll make two at 300 points, and you'll make one at 150 points. Let's just say what the sentinels do, all right? Six range, one bolt. They're also giant size, just like him. Great size, giant size, whatever. They're also indom, which is really cool. They cannot fly. They have sidestep with eight speed, ten attack with nothing, invulnerability with an 18 defense, and three damage without wit, which is pretty darn solid. So he makes giant sentinels, and they're, you know, they're pretty neat. His second trait is red on, behind the scenes, red onslaught can't be targeted by opposing characters five or more square, squares away. So it's great, because he outranges a ton of people already. And you got to get really close to this guy before you can even target him, which is really dope. His special speed power, which he has on his starting line at his 600-point line, does not have it at his 300-point line. He has normal running shot, but gets it randomly for three clicks on that line. And then at his whatever, 150-point line, he only has it for his last three clicks. So what does this really cool special speed power do? It's World War Hate. Mind control and sidestep when Red Onslaught uses mind control, targeting a single opposing character and hits... For the rest of the game, that character does not have any keywords and can't use team abilities. So, you know, that's pretty neat. I quite like that a lot, honestly. Um, it can come in pretty handy. The only bad thing is he doesn't have it top dial at 150. He also doesn't have it at 300, and he only has it at 600. So, it's not going to be reliably competitive. For Red Skull, which which is okay, you know he's a flavorful person. He's a more uh, this is a more flavorful character hero click, anyways. So I'm fine with it. His damage power, special damage power, which he has for the first six clicks of his life, which will be, of course, the first five of his 600. The only on the first click of his 300. Goodness gracious! And then on the first two clicks of his 150 point dial, he has Omega level. He has Mastermind and Leadership outwit. When Red, Skull, when Red Onslaught uses leadership and succeeds, you may also choose an opposing character within range and a standard power. Give the chosen character an action token, and that character can't use the chosen power until your next turn. Not range and line of fire, just the nine range. He succeeds at leadership. You can't use that power, and you get an action token. That's pretty darn cool, actually. Really, really, really like that. Only problem is you better hope you got someone to mastermind, too, because, man, is he squishy at 150. I would love to make this guy work in some really cool things. I'd have to see more from the set, but so far, I'm kind of loving him. I'm kind of cautiously optimistic. He's got some poison. He has a lot of pen blast on his 300 and, 300 and 600 point lines. It's just charge and poison at his 150 point line, and then he gets that mind control power later. So overall, he's a very interesting figure. I'm trying to figure out where he's going to work best, but still, I can't wait to play some fun home games with him for sure like some thousand point games going on which will just be awesome yeah i hate that he's got like nine range three lightning bolts and he's got the trait where opposing characters five or more squares away can't target him and then his entire bottom half of his dial he has poison it's like dumb. you're never gonna but i mean he's got a ton going for him basically i mean you make one of those even if you only play him at 150 you make one of those sentinels, all of a sudden you've got two outwits on the board. If you make your leadership roll, you've got like a, basically three outwits. And then Hydra team ability is like PD, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, your little sentinel guy might be able to shoot something with that. I like right it. On, man. I think he's pretty cool. And yeah, for sure. So once you get kind of like a sentinel horde, which I'll totally want to make those sentinels like as like just something to have on the board, it'll be really cool. Do you want to take us away with a very final and amazing, super duper crazy cool X Men animated series? Oh, you know it. So we got Sebastian Shaw. Actually, we didn't. Lucky Dice Cafe got That's Sebastian true. Shaw. Uh, we don't thanks, get Lucky Dice Cafe. Um, but. We got previewed. There, we we saw the preview. Is what I meant. He's got Hellfire Club, politician and ruler. Keywords. Real name: Sebastian Shaw. He's number zero four nine in the set. I'm guessing the chase is probably run to like zero five zero. Um, Inner Circle Club, Black King. This is a shared trait. Harry Leland had the same thing. So they all get outwit, but has to be a certain color, whichever color matches whatever they are. So he's the Black King, so he gets to outwit Black Powers. Or a special power, I guess. So that's a little bit better than what Harry had. He's got leadership, but may remove the action token regardless of adjacency. Uh, His other... He's got three traits in total. His other trait, kinetic energy absorption. Sebastian Shaw can't be knocked back. Oh, I'm always afraid of getting knocked back, so thank goodness for that one. His last trait, and the the more interesting one, but I think they they kind of I think they they rearranged it the wrong way, in my opinion. Uh, the trait is called "The more you fight, the stronger I become." When Sebastian Shaw is hit, give him a number of energy tokens equal to the damage dealt to him by that attack. Free. Remove any number of energy tokens. This turn, Sebastian Shaw can use the effect listed for that number and lower numbers. So if he has one energy token, you can remove it, and he gets willpower. If he has two energy tokens, you can remove both, and he gets charge and willpower. If he has three, he gets super strength, charge, willpower. If he has four, he gets flurry, super strength, charge, willpower. I mean, there's a pattern here, right? Maybe. If <laughs> if he's been hit for five damage, he gets to modify all combat values plus the previous ones. And if he removes six, he gets to use regen as free. I don't know if he's ever going to get that six pulled off. I think that your opponent's going to see it coming. Um, and he's not protected outwit, so I don't know. It's, it's going to be a little bit rough. Let's look at his dial, though. For 125 points... You get nine clicks. He's got sidestep the entire way down. Uh, his attack power is blank the whole way. He starts off his first three clicks he has perplex. He starts off with a nine speed, ten attack, seventeen defense with toughness, and three damage. He's kind of like a Hulk figure where like the more you hit him, the more powerful he gets. Um, on clicks two and three, he's got invuln instead of toughness. Still has perplex, still ten attack. Drops to an 8 speed. On clicks 4 through 6, he gets invincible, which I like more. Um, Still 17 defense on click 4, and then on 5 and 6, he gets bumped up to an 18. And on click 6, he finally gets an 11 attack and 4 damage. Then on clicks 7 through 9, he gets impervious, which I kind of feel like that's a step down from invincible. I don't know why, but... I just I almost never get to roll my impervious rolls. Um, on clicks eight and nine, he's got a twelve attack for four damage. So I think in like a reverse dial format, he's super solid because of that end dial shenanigans that he's got going on. But I feel like other than in like in sealed, he might be a monster because you're going to be throwing attacks at him and he's going to be racking up those those energy tokens. And, I mean, if he gets to regen, he might not even want to regen off if he's on click 8 or 9. He might just, you know, charge flurry you or something like that. He's going to try to mess you up, man. He's going to mess you up. Mess you up real good. I mean, try is going to be the uh, the biggest keyword. Obviously, characters that get better when they take damage is always a little risky. Uh, A little bit of a risky move, and it's going to be interesting. Um, At least it's on damage taken and not 
for every time he gets hit, which makes it like slightly easier to rack up those tokens, you know? So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. What do you think about modding the uh, the sculpt and putting like a little green hat on him and like a box of Lucky Charms in his hand? Oh, he's he's giving off that mad leprechaun vibe though. Like, <laughs> look at those look at those sideburns. Oh my, I mean, mutton, <laughs> the mutton chops. Giant man. green tights and uh, was, he looks very like, angry that some kids are after his Lucky Charms. Yeah. yeah, Lucky Charms are for rabbits. I mean, for le- whatever you know what I mean. Kids. Yep. <laughs> they're, they're not for kids. Silly, silly the leprechaun. Rainbows and harsh shoes. Nah, the balloon. Anyways, that's Sebastian Shaw. He sure is a neat guy. Yeah, he's just giving off that radiant fighting Irish energy. Don't know what to do with him. So, X-Men's really cool. People sure do like X-Men. But you know what else people like? WWE. So we're going to go ahead and move into the two previews we got from them this week. Blue. So yeah, I'm going to start off with, whew, I don't know what I was doing there, Stone Cold Steve Austin. So Stone Cold is pretty darn awesome. He comes in at 80 points or 50 points. He has zero range, one bolt, of course. He has no special combat symbols besides Indomitable. He has WWE and Celebrity, kind of bummed on the keywords. I didn't get, you know, like Brute or something. Or, uh, like, th- like, why isn't there a redneck keyword? Like, WWE, we just, we need a redneck keyword now, like, right? I mean, come on. He also, of course, has the WWE team ability. He has a trait. They've given us worse keywords. They have, I mean, that's true. I think of the Lord of the Rings set, there was, like, man was a keyword. Just, like, M-A-N, man. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, so, he has a signature move, which is close to, like, everybody else's signature move. He has a Stone Cold Stunner. Close. Knockback. If Stone Cold Steve Austin has one action token, make a close attack. If he hits after resolutions, choose one. Give a hit target an action token. Or remove an action token from Stone Cold Steve Austin. So, that's pretty awesome. Next up is the special charge he has on both his top dial and st- on both starting clicks for his 80 and 50 point dials, which is really cool. It is vehicular assault charge, period. When Stone Cold Steve Austin uses it, you may choose to not have a speed value. If you do, he has improved movement, ignores characters and hindering terrain, and modifies damage value plus one, but can only move in a direct path. So this is him just, ooh, he's gunning for it. He's hitting you, man. It's awesome. So top dial, what does that look like? He has an eight speed, 11 attack, 18 defense with invulnerability, and three damage, which is then, of course, a four. If he picks up a light object along the way, it can be for five. And then, of course, perplexes and whatnot. He's just, he's coming at you, and he's coming hard. Then he gets normal charge for two clicks. He gets flurry. He gets special charge again. Normal charge for three more clicks, and then flurry. It's really cool. Then he has toughness after he loses invulnerability for the next five clicks of his dial. And then he just has no defense powers at all. He has a base 3 damage until click 6, where then he gets 2 damage for the rest of his dial and perplex, because his perplex is what? What? Which is pretty cool. He also has circle powers, which we have no idea what any of these do so far. He has in cap for 2 clicks, which is circled, and it says slam. Then he has poison for 3 clicks, which is submission hold. And then on his last 3 clicks, he has stun, which is smoke cloud. So that's really cool. I think kind of a bummer is that there's no like austin 316 like power it's on his jacket which is really cool but it's weird that's not a name of any of the powers um it's it almost looks like they gave him a leg brace but i think that's just the way one knee pad looks and the other knee pad is actually just the same which is a little bit of a bummer i thought they were going to add that that would have been kind of flavorful because if you remember there's a time where he just like he was just like causing trouble we just had like a knee brace for like whatever reason you know kind of pretty it was pretty awesome it was pretty important to uh to his character, which is cool. Yeah, and, uh, at one point he was rocking too. Oh, was like, there? Oh, nice. Yeah, both knees got injured. So they say. So they say. You know, injured. You can't see the finger quotations, but I'm doing it. You have something to say to me? What? You got something to say to Stone Cold? Uh, no, no, Mr. Austin. No, no, <laughs> uh, not me. No, I would, I would never. I've never. Ins- <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, let's move on. Uh, for 80 points, I think it's great. He gets the free move. He's got a 16 square reach, potentially. I'm just stealing that from Simeon because he said it earlier. <laughs> yeah, so with the WWE uh, team ability, from like his starting area, 
he gets to move out his full speed value for free, and then he can do his like full move charge. So if your opponent is foolish enough to come within 16 squares, he can just like you know bop over so he's in a direct line with them, and then run them down. It's pretty darn gnarly. So this Stone Cold, if you haven't already pre-ordered these, once again, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug a little bit. Cool Stuff Inc. There for the $7.99, which is the normal price. Get them at Cool Stuff. You can pre-order them right now, and they can show up on your doorstep in August and or maybe September. We'll we'll see, I guess. I guess. Yeah, they said August, but I <laughs> like I need October? to figure out what like the actual new like updated solicitation is because I think they pushed it back a little bit. Right on. Do you want to take us away with Asuka? Yeah, speaking of uh, pre-ordering, here's a figure that I did not pre-order. <laughs> Honestly, I, I was there for the Attitude Era. I was there a little bit before the Attitude Era, into the Attitude Era. And then I don't remember what they called, like, the early 2000s. I don't I don't remember what they called it, but I... Is it the PG era or something like that? Like, I don't know. That's what it led into. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was there for, like, John Cena and all those guys, but I missed out on Asuka. She has WWE, Future, and Martial Artist. The reason she has Future is because one of her uh, stage handles, I guess you would call it, is the Empress of Tomorrow. Kind of like how The Undertaker has, like, the Dead Man, and, you know, like, he's got some other cool names that he goes by. Um, One of hers is the Empress of Tomorrow, so she got Future keyword. I don't know if that's going to be a trend, if they're going to play on, like, those names, and maybe, I don't know, maybe they'll give uh, Undertaker, like, Ghost Realm keyword. Why do I feel like that's probably not going to happen? <laughs> that's because it's named, and it's it's only in the Yo, undead set. <laughs> or whatever, yeah. You know All right. what I meant. <laughs> Back to Asuka. Um, she has two traits. Her signature move. Flying hip attack. Ooh, sounds deadly. If Asuka has one action token, you can use lightning speed. Um, it does match the hypersonic speed color, but it's a special power that we're not sure what it is. I'm hoping it's similar to hypersonic. When she uses lightning speed, if she moves only in a direct path and hits, modify damage plus one for each square she moves through. Calder, how much damage can she do top dial? She has a whole two printed damage, which means if she moves a whole bunch of squares, she can do five. Ooh. That would be, I mean, five, is that's nothing to, to balk at. Nothing's the gone. fact that she's only got two printed, most, uh, her entire dial except for her last click is a little bit concerning. But depending on what lightning speed does, you'll probably just be using this power a whole lot. Um that's my my guess. Uh, her second trait, no one is ready for Asuka. When she KOs an opposing character, choose a combat value that she has not chosen for this ability this game and modify it plus one for the rest of the game. If she has already chosen four combat values, heal her two clicks instead. She can't be healed above her starting line. So, I mean, this would be fun if uh, your opponent's playing, like, a Groot with some walking woods and she lightning speeds up and hits a walking wood and now she's got a plus one defense for the rest of the game. Um, so, I mean, I think you pick damage last just because her special signature move gives her plus damage already and it should be easy to get, you know, plenty of plus damage. But uh, that's probably the coolest trait that I think we've seen for WWE figures so far. Um, being able to, like, modify all combat values plus one, other than a range, sadly. She has a special attack power that she gets on her 40-point starting line and the last two clicks of her 80-point starting line. So on click three to click eight, I guess. Um, it's the Asuka lock. Asuka lock. <laughs> I did it, Calder. I did. I put the U in it. I knew it. Uh, yeah. I don't know what this looks like. I kind of wish I did, but it's a submission hold. When she uses it, increase damage dealt plus one for each Asuka lock token on the target, 
and after resolutions, give her target an Oscar lock token. Maximum two. So, not sure what submission hold does, but you're going to do more damage for each time that you use it. That's kind of like a, a cool little nod to the fact that, you know, like, when Kurt Angle would throw the ankle lock on for, like, the third time in a match, you'd be like, <laughs> oh, there's no way they're going to get out this time. It's the third time he's done it. That's they're right. taking plus two damage this time. Uh, I really like that it increases damage, which is, like, just really dope. Like, increases damage dealt instead of modifying her damage value, so that can actually have some real power to it, so I really enjoy that, for sure. Yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Submission holds something that you can combine with Charge or Flurry. Those are two things that she gets lower dial. Um, she starts with Charge, 10 speed, 11 attack, 18 defense, 2 damage with Close Combat Expert, uh, I think all the WWE figures are in Dom, so that's just something that is going to stay. It's uh, pretty awesome. She Maybe moves on to busted. Nimble. Yeah, it's for 40 points. I mean, there's not a lot of like DC characters that get in Dom for 40 points, or even 80 points sometimes, sadly. What's DC? Uh, what is DC? I think it's one of those wrestling groups that got bought out by Vince McMahon. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's say you run her at 80 points and you start racking up some of those modifiers. She could, top dial, she could have a 12 attack, 19 defense, 11 speed, and 3 damage. And then if you use her signature move, it'd be 5 damage, I suppose. Ooh. So that's pretty interesting. We don't know what submission hold does, so I don't know if you can use it with flurry, but that would be potentially cool on her last 3 clicks. With her nine attack that she gets in the on click six and seven, I don't like that at all. And why should you? No one, no one should like a nine attack. I'm for like forty anything. points, a nine attack. What is this? Two thousand sixteen. <laughs> That's not long enough ago. It's just sad, not funny. Should it? No. Time, time makes things funnier. Oh no. Twenty sixteen. What a rough year. Yeah. What happened? Before Thor is a dark Before time. Thor. It is a dark time. It really was. But, you know, Eclipso was still legal, so, like, never mind. Possessors <laughs> and all that jazz. Well, that is the news. That is everything we got previewed. Oh, my gosh. There's so much stuff. And yet, not enough in, in that, like, kind of funny way where it's like, but we still. I just I want to want know more. so much more. I'm just going to keep trolling uh, the WizKids Twitter until they drop the new pack. It's the only thing to do. Like be up at like 3 a.m. tonight, just like messaging them, like when's the new pack coming out? Hey, have you seen the new pack? Can I see the new pack? Let me see the new pack. What's this power do? If only I had, you know, <coughs> the new pack. But I would all stop right, messaging. that is a. Uh, they might be like, look, this Simi guy is he's giving us way too much trouble. It's just uh, release a new pack, but like make it in Japanese, so he has to translate it. So that there, there you go. I do it. Yeah, that's right. For the love of the community. All right. Uh, moving on to Patreon. It is the second episode of the month, which means we're going to do our Patreon ranking up ceremony. I don't have any of the cool music Chris does because we haven't figured that out yet. But Joshua G has become a citizen joining the Patreon. John Carl, good guy, pretty cool guy if you ask me, has become a citizen. And Anthony Brown has become a citizen, and guess what? Uh, that's right, you guessed it. There's one more citizen, and that is Jedi Legend has went ahead and jumped on the Patreon. Thank you guys so much. This is four new people jumping on the Patreon in one month, and I really, really appreciated that. And as a reminder, I still haven't made the Facebook post or Twitter post about it yet. I promise we're doing that tomorrow. It'll totally be lumped to the Community Tuesdays question. Maybe it won't. Maybe I'll forget. Don't worry about it. We're giving away a mammoth. Yeah, that's right. We're giving away a Ghost Rider Mammoth. It's going to be a raffle. It's going to happen at the end of August. So still, go ahead and jump on. It's like September 2nd or whatever. We're going to give away that Mammoth. For August's cool thing, we gave away dice a few months ago. It took us a while to get everything. But now that we have everybody's address, it's a lot easier. And we're going to be giving away stickers. So there are two different kinds of stickers. There's the normal Dial H logo, the current logo. And then there are Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy stickers. I'll make a post on Patreon for everybody to see. But you need to write in and let me know 
which sticker you want. Whether you want it to be Howdy Howdy, Let's Go Rowdy, or just a Dial H logo sticker for your Hero Clicks box. So yeah, go ahead, write in, let us know. That is everything for Patreon news. And of course, if you want to support the podcast, we would incredibly graciously love it if you would support us on Patreon. But moving on to the community section. Oh, there are what? Of us. You want to say stuff in a stone cold? You got time. That's okay. They sort of clipped a little, but we're fine. Uh, you heard the dozens of us. Let's get into the community Tuesday's question. Now that next gen is mostly spoiled, I guess all spoiled now, right? Uh, what Star Trek stuff would you like to see in the future? And for non-Trekkies, what property would you rather have, Simeon? What's your answer to the question? Like your personal answer. Um, on a personal note, I feel attacked that they didn't put Guinan in the set. Um, for Calder, that would be Whoopi Goldberg's character. Oh, awesome. Thank you for... The fact I, I that... Yeah, the fact that there's no Whoopi Goldberg... No shifting focus, Whoopi Goldberg. I mean, come on. She was, she was in there for at least like four seasons, I want to say. Um, I don't know if it's like a rights issue or what, but man, am I toasty about it. I wonder if it would just like cost a lot of money to get her, her likeness or whatever signed off. Yeah. She's too famous for him now. She's way too famous. You can't be on The View and be a hero click. Impossible. I think that's the show she's on. I can't really remember, honestly. They could have just done, like, a sketch variant and, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and just, like, oh. just been, like, hey, it's it's supposed to be this character, but you have to paint it yourself because we're not allowed to. That's definitely the way it should have been done, Simeon. You're so right. <laughs> I have um, such good ideas. I mean, totally. All right, uh, what I would have had, I would still kill for a Team Fortress 2 set. That's still, like, one of my, like, number one wants, like, for sure. Like, that would be a great gravity feed plus starter pack. Like, there's there's plenty of characters to make a one-off gravity feed and then call it done. I think that would be really, really awesome. That would just have, that'd have to be my number one want. So, jumping into it, I'm going to start off with the Twitter first, because I know for a fact we had more on Twitter than we did on Facebook. So, that would be just start and end with Twitter, which is really cool. Ronnie! So definitely Star Wars, and as I remember that I need to pull up <laughs> the heroic rankings. Uh, I don't remember which Ronnie this is. So, so yeah, go ahead and take us away on Facebook, Simeon. All right. We've got Peter Marshfield said, Always so many good ideas that get posted on here for this question. There are always a million and one ideas that come to my mind. If I could have a choice, I'd really like to see a My Hero Academia set. Odds of it happening are non-existent, but we can dream. A second to this would perhaps be maybe a straight Shonen Jump set featuring iconic heroes and villains Goku and Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z, uh, Ichigo and Aizen from Bleach. I mean, I think I think Shonen Jump would just like sell out like crazy. Oh, I know sure. I'd. I'd buy a full like set of uh, My Hero Academia too, even though uh, there's a few characters I just really don't want to see. Okay, well let's just uh, <laughs> let's get past that repressed anger and move on. I didn't even know like half the things he said in that, but My Hero Academia would be pretty cool. I'd be cool with that. Citizen Chris Kurtz said, "Star Wars, not Star Trek." Has to Kurt Kurt is an, that's not a nice word I can say on the show. Huh. Take us away again, Simeon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got Jonathan Throckmorton. I hope I'm not butchering all these names, but I cannot make any promises. Yeah, that sounds close enough to me. Oh, I lost it. That's, that's why you don't get paid. <laughs> that is why I'm the intern. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and Peter Marshall is a citizen, by the way. <laughs> Saved it. So depending on what Ronnie it was, whether it was Andrew or Wineland, it was a supervillain or a citizen, we'll figure it out. I don't know why his last name is there. Do you want me to just read the next one on uh, on Twitter while you try to get it back? Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Uh, citizen Jedi Legend said, I still think Transformers, the vehicle shifting focus mechanics would be awesome. Uh, a few people also agreed with that. I totally think Transformers that just have an extra vehicle version would be uh, super, super dope. 
And if Simeon still isn't back, I'll read uh, Ben Jones, Citizen Ben Jones. I believe, if I get it wrong, write in and tell me how terrible I am and how you're never going to listen to this show ever again. Because he's a protagonist, that's why. Deep Space Nine. See, I even knew what DS9 meant for me. Cisco, Odo, Garrick, and Shifting Focus, Dax, so many others, it would be a great set. Is that a Star Trek thing, Simeon? I think it's a Star Trek thing. Deep Space Nine? Yeah. Yeah. Then right yeah, on. He's a Trek. Completely... We did it. We did it. I, I think Deep Space Trek Nine is the second most wanted uh, Trek set. And then I think Voyager is like a close second after that. I personally liked Voyager more, but I think everyone else likes Deep Space Nine more. All right, I'm back up and running. Jonathan Throckmorton said, A mythological set with gods and monsters would be cool, but I do like the Trek stuff. Um, for those of you that don't know, WizKids actually does make D&D miniatures. They're, like, not painted, so they're just the sculpts. But they do a really good job of making these D&D miniatures, and it is so sad to me that they don't just slap a dial on it and put it in a set for us. I would love a D and D set, like generic, like paladin, and then all the other like, like rogue, bard, cleric. Like, that'd be neat. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Super fan, little plastic superheroes. Sad Heroclix players are ready to see some colossal Transformers Heroclix. I believe so. Sure. I'd like to see it. <laughs> I mean, whether it's shifting focus, I just, I really don't want it to be like um, Pacific Rim. Oh, yeah, like, that was I'm rough. supposed to believe that this colossal is bigger colossal. than it actually is. Yeah, yeah. and it's like a one-by-one one base. All right, we got Jason Carr. Another Rest in Peace set, the Undead set, would be awesome. But what I'd really like to see is the characters from Project Superpowers. Green Llama, Black Terror, Death Defying Devil, and Fighting Yank. Oh, All yes. of them are public domain as well. Those See, guys. I don't know what this is. Do you those know what people. this is? Nope, those people. Those, they sound great. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Love them. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Project Superpowers. Yeah. Citizen Loyal Miller said, I'd love to see tr Star Trek versus Star Wars just because it would be fun, but I would also love to see some other non-mainstream things get added, like some anime or Dark Horse comics. Yeah, Dark Horse comics that aren't mainstream, you know, like Star Wars. Or, you know, just something outside of Marvel or DC. I added that extra bit about the Dark Horse Star Wars. Anyways, take us away again. All right. Citizen Jeff Poyer? Poyer? I don't... I, I say Poyer. 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 Even if it's right. wrong. That's what I say anyways. Hopefully he yells at you and not me. Because I'm following he, I don't think he's going to yell. All right. He'll be real nice about it. <laughs> he said, I'd like to see another... Uh, he said TOS, I think he means uh, the original series of Star Trek, before Next Gen was even announced. I made a list of several dozen original series figures that could be made, including characters from the animated series. There, yeah. Anything that runs for multiple seasons, um, they're just never going to get everything in there. For sure. And, uh, yeah, I. Because even. Even with Next Gen, Next Gen was only seven seasons, I think. Um, I think it was only about seven seasons, and there was plenty of like cool like aliens and stuff that they never got around to doing. And I haven't watched all of the uh, original series. I've watched a lot of it, and I've watched most of the movies. But I just know, yeah, they definitely didn't do a lot of characters justice in some of the sets. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Because I know it means a lot of people to get them right. This is probably the only time they'll ever get made, which really sucks. Yeah, I know. I know how much you really wanted them to do justice to this Trek stuff. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, I see the content is showing. Content, whatever. Bryce Bangard or Bangard. I hope I got that right. I'm sorry, man. I feel like you do some really cool shifting focus stuff with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And also, there could be some cool mechanics with the Mortal Kombat license. Yeah, for sure. I'd like a Mortal Kombat set. I wouldn't. I they did Mortal Kombat vs. DC. Oh, that's I mean, right. That was a game that existed. How hard would it... I mean, it was practically a DC comic, right? 
Just exactly. uh, just go and steal it, WizKids. Do your thing. All right. <laughs> David G. Gaffney says, I would really like to see a Walking Dead set. There's a lot of options they could do. Shifting focus Rick with his gun and close combat piece and a lot of characters to choose from. A Michonne piece with her two zombies that you could pop off would be cool, too. I, I don't know what this is. Do you know what this is, Calder? Walking Never Dead heard set. Of Never heard of it. Sounds okay. like something that was really overhyped a few years ago and it's totally died off now. It just isn't worth uh, looking into anymore. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> sorry. I really liked, I'm not going to lie, I really liked Walking Dead. I think it's a really cool show. It's one of, It was a show I really liked watching for a really long time. But now I'm just kind of, whenever it comes on Netflix, it comes on Netflix. I would, I would love a set. Don't, don't get I, me wrong. I'd love a set. I watched it up until where they killed off Herschel. And I could just not forgive him after that. I was I'm like, so mad. Oh. you're all dead to me. Herschel this was, this was whole really show is dead to me. That was really tough. Yeah, Herschel, like, I could have stopped watching after Herschel, too. I, I totally agree with that. Did my man some non-justice right there. Then they killed another character. You know, it's been long enough. They killed Abraham. And that's actually, I was more upset how little people cared about Abraham dying than, uh, what's his face, Glenn. I was like, really? All everybody cares about Glenn, but like, my man Abraham, hilarious comedy backbone of this show, and you're just like, oh, Glenn died. I'm like, whatever, man. Get out of here. <laughs> Citizen Collectibles said the Venture Bros would be a perfect fit, actually. Now, I've only seen two episodes of the Venture Bros and played Poker Night 2 that Brock is in, and I have no idea how this would fit at all in Heroclix, but I'm glad someone thinks so. I mean, there's like a, I don't know, the, like their bodyguard dude is like indestructible and super strong. Uh, the the monarch guy, he can like fly and he's got a bunch of generic drone dudes. That's all I can think of. I've, like you said, I, I've only seen like two episodes of it. Well, yep. That's that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. Like it's it looks cool. Like I like I sort of enjoyed the two episodes. I I'm pretty sure that I saw. It's been a few years. Um, thought it was funny. At least thought it was pretty funny. Uh, yeah. Keep going on Facebook. All right. Brian Poling says, "I really feel, oh, I feel really let down that we didn't get a Zephram Cochran as a hyper taxi with something like the Father of Warp Drive, Passenger Three, Speed Fifteen, but can only move in direct lines." That's a Star Trek reference, Calder. Yep. Warp was. drive, that's how they uh, fly their ships. They use the warp drive. Well, that sounds like, lame. They say, like, drop me into warp. No, and then, no hyper, uh, hyper drive. That's and then loser. the guy at the console's like, you know why they call me DK? And they're like, no. He says, Drift King. And he just, like, you know, flies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was... Fast and the Furious. Wow. Okay. Goodness It'll get gracious. there. Give it another, like, give it another hundred <laughs> movies, and they'll be in space. Oh. Uh, well, that's enough about Anyways, go see Hobbs and Shaw in we in theaters this weekend, August 7th. <laughs> uh, Chance McCall on Twitter said, forget Star Trek and all the Enterprise nerds. Star Wars is where it's at. All the proof you need is Han Solo, Darth Vader, and Boba Fett. Starfleet is full of dorks. I mean, I totally agree with that. Okay, yeah, I, I can't disagree. Yeah. Star Trek is like the intelligent version of Star Wars. <laughs> it's it's no, just uh, not Star as Trek is, and whatnot. Star Trek, first of all, it's like you take a movie, the amount of character development you can do in like even a trilogy just doesn't compare to multiple seasons. So you get way more character development in Trek than you do Star Wars because you just have way more time with the characters. But also they're just like always like diplomatic and stuff and they, they care about things. And Star Wars they're like, hey, don't like that guy, let's blow it up. Just Star shoot Ryan. it. Which, I mean, they both have their places. I enjoy both for different reasons. Tyler Murin, Murin Mur, Mur, Murder uh I know he says, I know this isn't exactly fit to the mold, but I have thought it would be cool to get Star Trek resources that are the ships that grant once per turn a character on your once per turn a character on your force some free action 
almost the way the like the power batteries worked. You could move pieces around or make attacks from characters and squares or grant powers on the dial of the ship. So I think that would be cool too. Um, we had the Justice League transporter or teleporter. Teleporter? Teleporter. So why, can't, why can't we get a Star Trek transporter, Calder? I want an I ID know. card for every Star Trek character oh so boy. I can call them in. Please, no. Please, not that. <laughs> I wonder which one of these little little plastic things in the gravity feed has an ID card. Oh, yeah, that one. Uh, unless they do another booster set, whatever. Super fan Christian Bogan said, definitely a non trekky Personally, I'd love to see some Capcom stuff come around. Uh, he says all the Capcom properties, um, except for the one I want the most. Uh, he says a remake of Street Fighter, Sonic, Resident Evil, and Mega Man. Etc. Even though Sonic is a Sega property, <coughs> now since they've done uh, TMNT and BTAS and now Xmas, uh, I would like to see Street Sharks, Double Dragon, or Captain Planet. Uh, negative super fan points for not doing uh, Dead Rising, which is one of my favorite uh, Capcom properties. But that's okay, Christian Bogan. We still love you in our hearts. And Street Fighter Mega Man is still super high up there for me. Yeah, I don't. I think you're just completely wrong. I don't know how they do a Dead Rising game, Calder. That's uh, that doesn't make any sense. Zombies it, don't fit this game at yes, all. Yes, that's true. They would never make zombies in zero <laughs> All that right, Todd. Stupid. I can't believe I said that. Todd Butcher <laughs> says, "I'm well positive the licensing would be a nightmare, but the newer indie clicks would be great. Valiant Comics, Dark Horse Heroes, Image Comics. There's probably a ton more out there that I'm not even aware of." Uh, that's very true. Any indie comic. Um, so we got like Invincible a long time ago and the dials don't hold up whatsoever. Um, we got some Hellboy stuff a long time ago. Same thing. Like it works if you play it with itself or with the other stuff from that time, but it'd be super cool to get, um, like some image properties. I like image books. Yeah, most of the books I read have images in them, so yeah, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeez. All right, goodness gracious, golly gosh, Tiemu, Vigilante Tiemu, I believe that's Bonsai Street Set, I'm like 90% sure. Uh, <laughs> Deep Space Nine and Voyager would still be cool to get from me. I don't know what ended up happening with the Transformers license after the announcement, but shifting focus formers sure would be great. I'll tell you what happened after the announcement. They then said they wouldn't make them for hero clicks, and that's what happened. Simeon? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd re I really hope they just reverse their decision, but I feel like they never will. I think we're just out of luck on those properties. Yeah, probably. Uh, Matthew Esch says, I dig the Trek stuff, but ain't hunting it. Just to throw it out there, a possibility could be to go with Transformers. Shifting focus mechanics between robot, alt mode, make this possibility. The non-blind retail of the WWE figures can be replicated with or without pairing the same character mode variations. So I agree. If they did do Transformers, I'd like to see it in like a similar, like a Fast Forces pack maybe. Um, but again, I want them, I want them like actual colossal size. So if I'm fighting like, if it's like Starscream versus, you know, Superman, they're not the same size. I just... Right. I can visualize, sure. but I can't visualize that well, you know. I need a lot of help. Okay, I gotcha. Rex Jungle Cat said WizKids should create a Saturday morning cartoon set from the 80s. It's almost like people are nostalgic or something for that specific uh, generation. Including all the faves mentioned in other comments, each set released could cover a few shows like Thundercats, Visionaries, Brave Star, etc. Two of those, I have no idea what those are. Eventually ending with Transformers G.I. Joe set to cap off the run. All right. Paul Groth said, I'd buy a lot of Shonen Jump set. I would as well. Nice. I would buy, even if it wasn't like a, a Shonen that I actually watched a lot, I would still buy it just for the hope of the more, like, the ones that I watch more, you know? Oh, sure. Right on. That's what I did with the original series. <laughs> and, and look where we are now. Now we have next yeah, generation. That was all, that was you, all because of me. <laughs> all right. So Jay said DS9 is the obvious answer here. Maybe a DS9 set with Voyager subset to fill it out. So sure. 
Yeah. You know, Star Trek. Calder wants more Trek figures. He cannot wait I can't for the wait. next set. I can't wait. It, you can see it by all the zero dollars I spent on this set about how I just can't wait for the next, next what? half of this. Zero dollars? <laughs> That's right. How dare you? You didn't even go to like a sealed? Ugh. Darn right. I wish I wish we had a studio so I could like throw something at you from across our studio desk. Oh yeah, yeah. Throw it to the computer. Just chuck something as hard as you can to the computer screen and see what happens. I'm gonna email you something and I'm gonna attach something and when you open it it'll just like slap you. This How about message that? will explode in thirty seconds. <laughs> Alright. James Atkins says Gundam. Enough said. Gundam would be sweet. I I mean, Gundam's like what if Transformers were anime? I I don't know. Transformers were anime. That was bad. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of like the quote unquote like normal Gundam stuff, like Evangelion or whatever. But I like giant robots. Like that's I mean yeah. Gnarly. Like, Anytime you know, like, there's giant robots fighting, pretty hard to go wrong with giant robots. Uh, Jamie Lovett said, "I think Star Trek Discovery would lend itself even better to clicks than the '90s shows, given the first season is a war story and it's a little more action heavy." Also, Deep Space Nine, because Deep Space Nine is the best. Do you, do you disagree right. with any of that, Simeon? No. Okay. I mean, I I think it's valid that uh, people like Deep Space Nine more than uh, Voyager. I just, I just disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I like Janeway. I like, I like <laughs> Seven of Nine. Okay. Um, all right, Robin Caves posted a very long trek related uh list of uh figures that they they'd like to see and honestly if you're on Facebook definitely check it out if you like trek because i mean it's a pretty comprehensive list of all the stuff that we could that we should see hopefully in the future um and uh they even put a special mention in there for you Calder the champion of Sunkatsi was played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I had no idea. That's awesome. Yeah. So there's like there's one episode in uh, I think it's Voyager that that happens in. There's one episode where you just see The Rock like beat That's up so awesome. Seven of Nine and just like throws her around. And, like I mean she she gets a couple of hits in, but he definitely oh he does do the rock bottom. I remember that because for some reason anytime. He appeared in movies and TV shows for a long time. He always did the rock bottom to people. That's awesome. How about why do I not know? Why have I never known this until now? Because you just you just don't watch the right stuff, man. That's true. That's true. Michael Fedor. I was disappointed that this classic episode was not represented in the set. No Danthan or Tamarians. Hopefully, we can fix that soon. Shaka when the walls fell is what the gif says. Alien yeah, person. that shock with the walls fell. Um, you remember when I was talking about the super rare Picard, and he's got that uh, the Chunak and Tanagra thing. I don't remember what oh, it is. Oh yeah, totally. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. No, nah, you, you don't. Of words. Stop <laughs> lying to me. <laughs> it was it was a good reference. Oh okay. Nice. I got it. I just don't remember the episode oh, enough. Goodness. All right, is there anything you left on Facebook? Nope, that was all we had on Facebook. Fan-freaking-tastic. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our Community Tuesdays question. Next up, we have a Jedi legend tip of the week. A Jedi okay. legend. <laughs> okay. You know what? It's good enough. We're going to go for it. Jedi Legend series with Stick of the Week. <laughs> oh, gosh. If you don't have an improved movement or a power that allows an elevation change, your character must pass through both squares with the number denoted on the triangles. There is no diagonal jumping up the stairs. All right? You got to go straight through the one and the two, the two to the three, the three to the four. All right? You get me? Unless, of course, you got leap climb flight, etc, etc. For all you grounded folks that gotta walk, there's no jumping up sideways up the stairs. There's no parkour for you. Just go up. Walk them up like a normal person. So thank yeah. you, Jedi Legend. Um, I know 
when I began, I used to try to do that like all the time. When I first started playing, I tried to uh, walk diagonally upstairs all the time. It's like there's no stairs there. Like, what are you doing? What's what is wrong with you? That's how talking about like at your venue when you're yeah. trying to walk up the stairs yeah. at your venue, yeah, you'd yeah, walk yeah. up time, sideways. I would walk up sideways. It was really weird. And they'd be like, Calder, there's those aren't even stairs. You're what are you doing? It was so weird. Uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, my depth perception must have been off. Yeah, I like how if you grab, if you just ever grab like a random older map, like Golden Age, there will be sections of elevated, and they don't mark how to get up the elevated in the older maps. They just have like a tiny ladder printed on there, or like a tiny stair printed on there, and you're just supposed to guess like, oh, that's how I'm supposed to get up. That's, that's my weird. favorite that's part of it. That's yeah. weird. You know what else we have, though, Simeon? What's that? A Malcolm Rush question block. That's in Japan! Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. Well, we don't have to, because we're taking a little bit of Japan here with us. That was so bad. That was pretty bad. All right. It's hot and humid <laughs> in Japan, and Japan just had an earthquake about an hour ago. This is on Sunday. No damage, but it lasted about two minutes. So let's talk about elements and weather in hero clicks number one best and worst hero clicks character that use all four elements we're classifying these as earth wind water and fire simeon go all right i interpreted this different than you called her so <laughs> um so i broke it down into best for each element so my best for each element i did phoenix magneto for fire because i i can't get over it he's cool I like him. Uh, the best for water is Dolphin from Rebirth. 30 points. You can Blades. You can end cap, You can Shape Change. Just wow. Super good. Uh, my best air. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything that had air until after I already wrote this answer down. So I put the Age of Apocalypse Jean Grey. She uses what's, air, right? What's the air? I don't, I don't Mind air. Mind I, air? Oh, sure. I'm, right? That's I mean, there's, is that correct? No, not really. <laughs> uh this I'm gonna I'm gonna get a D on this answer M, yeah. aren't I? So uh, what Malcolm Rush actually said. Sorry, you didn't do your earth yet, right? Uh yeah, best earth I put Sandman. The superior foes. That's fair. That's pretty fair. So what he actually said was that use all four elements, um, Use the four elements, I guess. Uh, the way I understood that was a character that could use all of them. I just said worst is Crystal. Um, this Freak Quake is clearly terrible. And the best is Element Man. Because, you know, it's Element Man. He uses all sorts of elements in the periodic table. So it's pretty dope. And I just love that Element Man so much. Number two, best sculpts for Earth, Wind, Water, and Fire. I think best sculpt is uh, Firefly. From Joker's Wild? Totally. I think it's a cool sculpt. It's a fairly bad figure, but it's a cool sculpt. Do you, do you know what the rest you're going to go for? or? Oh, yeah, I'll just go in order. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I put, so I still couldn't figure out wind, so I put Graviton. He uses wind, right? The wind, the wind that, gravity. I mean, his cape, it's all flowy. That's... <laughs> That's totally uh, <laughs> win. <sighs> I haven't yeah. watched Fifth yeah. Element in a while. I don't know. I don't know what wind is. Uh, for water, I put either Giganto and Namor or King Shark. I think King Shark probably edges it out, but I love that Giganto Namor sculpt. And then for Earth, it's either the Superior Foe Sandman or the Clayface from Joker's Wild. Right on. I don't um, know if I, he's technically Earth, but... Yeah, Clayface, Clay? I mean, Clay is he's more Earthy than Sand. I mean, I guess they're both kind of... Well, anyway, whatever. Um, uh, my, uh, my fire was the Human Torch from the Captain America set. It's a big old ball of fire. I really dig that. My water was kind of in line with yours. It was Namor, but it was the Nick Fury Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Namor. I like the little water sploosh he's got going on. Yeah, he's like diving for, down. Yeah. Uh, for wind, I went with Whirlwind. It's in his name. His name oh, wow. Little tornado. I can think of things that have wind. Cool, yeah. Alder. Oh. I'm and... really, <laughs> really and... proud of you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And Earth, 
I was eventually uh, gonna. I was originally gonna go with the Avengers team base, but then I remembered uh, they're on the moon, and that's literally not Earth. So I went with the zombie team base, which is Earth, that they're just standing on, just a bunch of rocks and stuff. You know, so totally cool. If you make a team with only one of the elements, which element would you pick, and why? And what would your team? What would your team build like would be? So give us give us like a rough estimate, a little rough thing. Like what element are you gonna go with if you're gonna make a team? Um, so I made a water team recently, um, just cause I had the, the secret wars battle world, uh, Namor, and I had a bunch of dolphins and I had some other stuff that just like made sense for water. So I put down that I'd make a fire team because <laughs> fire pieces are usually more aggressive. You usually get like a pen out of like fire characters or like, uh, poison or something cool like that. And so I just threw a 500-point team, the Phoenix Force Magneto at 250, and the Lex Luthor God of Apocalypse at 250. Oh, nice. I thought that'd be – it'd be something. Because he's on fire for, you know, reasons. It's pretty cool. Yeah, he's uh, kind of flame. Yeah, it's kind of flame. If I would go, I'd go with, like, a wind team because I know how wind works. So, like, Whirlwind, Riptide, Red Tornado – yeah, why don't you just keep naming them? Uh, sure. The tornado no graviton wins. on that team? Nah, probably not. It's How not wind. You. <laughs> it's like <laughs> wind for big things, all right? It's space wind. That's what gravity is. Have you, have you ever took, took a science class? Like, ever, like, like I, entire life? I'll have you know I am a science class, Calder. Oh. Right now. You failed. <laughs> Oh no! You named uh, too much wind. Too much wind. Too much wind. This kid's going nowhere. It's a plunk him. Uh, number four, best and worst Heroclix characters of weather powers. I put down Weather Wizard as the worst oh, because he's from the Flash set and he's just like overcosted for what he did. I just remember pulling him like twice and did not care about the character because I didn't read a ton of Flash comics and I just like. As a Hero Clicks figure, I thought it was terrible. Um, for the best figure with the weather controlling power, I put Beta Ray Bill, the new one, the one that can't be targeted unless you started the turn within four squares of him. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I yeah. Guess he's got control of the elements or the weather, the hammer, his thing. That's kind of neat. I'm going to be real with you. I didn't get this far when I first read the question, so this is going to be uh, – we're just going to be doing it live. Worst hero with characters, weather powers. Uh, I'm going to give that to uh, to no one yet, but I'm going to give best to Storm because we have a lot – we've had a lot of good Storms, even if they've been like that cheap 50-point Storm from UXM, which has got some perplexed, the free smoke cloud. It's really cool. It's super helpful. Like we've always – we've never gotten like terrible Storms. This new Wakanda Storm is really good. Um, I the – the Ellie empowered yeah, the LE LE one. The empowered Wakanda she gives everyone spells. It's, cool. it's really cool. Yeah. So yeah, and Storm then, for sure. I think the rare from XXS she could carry. Uh, X -Men. That's like that's like okay since we already have like way better X Men carries, which kind of sucks. Yeah. She's getting a little overshadowed, but yeah, even she's not bad. Like she's still solid. So yeah, Storm for sure. And like, who's the worst? You know, Element Woman. She's pretty terrible. Like compared to like how good that Element Man is, uh, she's like pretty bland, and not very good. Uh, but she was from Trinity War, so a lot of figures were just terrible from that set. Um, that's just the way it be. And uh, of course, best and worst sculpts that are using weather powers. So it's like a really lame, lame sculpt when that person's got weather powers, or you know, a really good one with them weather powers. I think the I put that down for the best one, even though we haven't seen the actual sculpt yet. I put the uh, the new Storm Thor, the Storm holding the Mjolnir. I think that one's pretty cool. I am assuming she's gonna have weather controlling powers. Um, actually, we already saw what she does, so she does kind of control the weather. Uh, worst, tell me if this one if this works or not. Even though he doesn't have weather controlling abilities. Per se, I put Eric Masterson. <laughs> How dare you! First of all, Eric <laughs> Masterson is my man, but yeah, he's just normal Eric Masterson. Yeah, he's just standing there being all yeah, he's like 
He's got like his like his Letterman sink. jacket on and his just he's got his hand in his pockets, just chilling. It's like if Eric like Masterson, this. if he's not, you know, weather controlly enough for you, then I put Tab App Thor as a strong backup. Oh, for sure. As worst sculpt. That Thor was like okay too. Like it wasn't terrible. It wasn't the worst Thor in the world. No. Uh for best sculpt for me, it's gotta go uh, M10 Storm, probably because she also has lightning. Plus, like, I want to say this is, like, snow around her hands, and then she, her, like, feet are in the tornado, which is, like, I just, she's using quite a bit of weather, which is really cool in this sculpt, so I really always dug that. My least favorite uh, is, like, also kind of contradictory, because I love Element Man, but he's just standing there with his arms crossed. It's super lame. It's, like, a really boring sculpt for all the cool stuff that he could be doing, so yeah. And yeah, he could six. be like a mailbox, like plastic man. Yeah, obviously better. But I, but I mean, like turning his hand into something and like his feet, like whatever. Like you could really use the elements there, but he's just he's crossing his arms, like yeah, I'm here. I don't want to be here, but I'm here. Number six. What type of weather and season do you like and don't like? This is not Heracles related. This is a personal, subjective question. I guess they're all subjective. Simeon. Well. Weather has, like, a direct impact on uh, my work, so... No way. My favorite uh, is, like, overcast day with, like, 60-degree weather. I bet you like it when it's, like, super windy, just, like, crazy windy, right? Like, that's, like, your favorite type of weather, clearly? Yeah, I like uh, almost getting blown off of uh, structures 70 feet up. Nice, nice, very nice. Uh, my favorite. What's your favorite season? Uh, fall or spring. I mean, I don't like it super hot out like it has been the last couple of days, and I also don't like it when it's negative twenty out. So, anything that's like mild, which in the Midwest is very rare. Yeah, it's not really a possibility. Uh, my favorite. People find out like this. I uh, my least favorite season is is summer. I hate it. It's too hot. Um, you can only take off so many layers before uh, you're gonna get arrested by the police. And they'd be like, you can't do that. It's illegal. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Just gotta Don't cover you yourself in oil. Is, and too slippery. That's right. That's <laughs> you can't catch me. I'm too slippery. Uh, and but I I really like winter. Uh, I love snow. I love it. It's awesome. I don't like, you know, I don't like crazy wind. Wind is probably my least favorite type of weather. Uh, because wind instantly ruins winter. Winter's totally fine. Like it can be snowy and it can be snowing like constantly. But once it's windy, it's like, oh, it sucks. My face is incredibly just snow burnt. It's terrible. It's like winter, I love it. I don't like summer. Um, but wind ruins any type of, like, seasonal. Because, like, like, rain, I don't even mind rain. But when it's windy and rainy, it's, it's kind of terrible. So, anyways. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, number seven, he just uh, added one. Didn't really. Like, we totally knew this was going to happen. But... Let's ask about maps, best and worst maps. He said for Earth, Wind, Water, and Fire. This is pretty tough, uh, because most maps are just on Earth. So, like, there's a park map that's on Earth. It's an Earth map. The mound is a map. I don't even know if that's on Earth, but it's a big amount of Earth. I don't know, Simeon, you got any maps to shout out? I mean, Wakakanda is one that comes to mind for Earth. Um, Yeah, I can't think of, like, a bad Earth map, because... That just like that'd be just like a bad map in general, I guess. Uh, can you think of a good wind map, Calder? Since you're the wind expert yeah, on this I'm podcast, yeah, I'm a wind expert, uh, clearly. So here's what I would go with wind, and that would, they're all going to be jets or like airplanes, because you know wind is going to be happening on the outside and fall off the map. So I really like uh, the shield helicarrier, the whatever it was called in the Winter Soldier movie. I also like the Deadpool map, which was the Merc jet, not the Lucid, whatever, it was like a jet on the inside, though, that was really cool. That would be, that could be, like, my best guess go-to for wind. Well, your knowledge of wind is, uh, it's, it's, continues it's, it's, to astound me. It truly does. Uh, fire I, yeah. is Limbo, for sure. Like, that's, like, my number one pick, probably, for fire is Limbo. Uh, water is Atlantis, or there's also the Flooded Street, whatever, rock map, which is just terrifying. Uh, why would you do that? Why would you take me here? Why I can't believe you've done this. I actually think Yu-Gi-Oh had a map for each element. I can't I can't remember, but they I know they had like the dueling kingdom water map. 
And it was awful to play on. If you didn't have uh, improved movement, it was terrible. Well, that was fun. That was a roller coaster. That was the Malcolm Rush question block. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you so much for sending us questions, Malcolm. We always appreciate it because they're always kind of uh, something we wouldn't normally think of, a little out of the box, and that's really that's really cool. And we learned uh, Calder knows a lot about wind. He knows so a lot about wind. Congratulations, fact, Calder. Know, yeah. You won the questions. I hope you're happy with yourself. I'm always happy with myself. Uh, beating Simeon in questions, which is clearly the competition, the point of the entire segment, uh, is always good. Uh, so eat it and bite my dust. <laughs> Anyways. I'm research wind power. <laughs> it's type in wind power. You just see it. Oh, it's like Fan Man. Power. Is that a character? Fan Man? I could have picked Thanos Copter. Could be. Dang it. Ah, oh. you would have been a good one. Uh, I uh, thought but, of you know, you're a loser who knows nothing about wind. So, <laughs> as a reminder, Dialy for Heroes, folks, you can find us on Podbean, you can find us on iTunes, and on YouTube. Our Twitter is at Dial H4, that's the number four, Hero Clicks. Our Facebook page is Dial H4 Hero Clicks. It's Facebook.com slash it, you know. And then iTunes, of course, YouTube, of course. And our email is Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. We, of course, have a Patreon and a Redbubble where you can jump on and get t shirts and stickers and all sorts of things. Simeon. Is there anything you want to end this show on? Yeah, uh, just take care of yourself, guys. You know, have a good week. Well, that was a lot nicer than I thought it was going to be, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Do you want to um, read us out? You take care of yourself, too, Calder. Yeah, I won't, but that's okay. <laughs> As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you in part by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and steel products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails.